with you once again, and this week I want to ask a little political question that uh, I think is a key question going through this primary season and a key question for the Republican Party and the conservative movement. And it's a question the media really hasn't asked a whole lot of, I mean, they've kind of hinted around at it, but they haven't really come out and asked it. The question I'm asking to the conservative movement, the Republican Party, is this. In terms of the 2012 presidential election, is beating Barack Obama the only goal? Is that the end-all and be-all of what this election is about? Is the only goal making Barack Obama one-term president and nothing more? Is that it? Or is there perhaps a bigger goal that we should be fighting for? Uh, something beyond just putting Obama out of office that needs to be our focus? Well, I'm going to examine that question today. What brought this question to my mind was a local uh, radio talk show that we have here in the St. Louis area, a guy named Dave Glover. Great little show he does, uh, an afternoon drive time show. and It's an interesting show because it, goes, it, it runs a gamut. It goes, you'll, you'll do a political segment, and then after that you'll be doing fart jokes. And, uh, <laughs> and I say that as a compliment because very few broadcasters could run that gamut the way he does. Uh, but Glover is, uh, I guess if you were to label him, he would be considered a moderate. He's not really an over-the-top conservative like I am. Uh, certainly not a, an over-the-top liberal either. But he asked a question a couple weeks ago in his show in terms of the uh, GOP nominating process, a question directed to those of us in the Tea Party, at what point will any candidate be conservative enough for you? And several people called in, including myself, talking about that. Uh, and really the idea about what would happen if Mitt Romney uh, were to get the nomination. Would we in the Tea Party, we in the conservative movement, would we fall in line with him? Or would we uh, rebel in some way? And I thought that was a very interesting question. And, and it leads right into the idea of what is this election all about. Now, most of you I'm sure by now you're aware that pretty much any political observer, pretty much any pundit, anybody in the media, anybody who works inside the Beltway, would tell you that in terms of beating Barack Obama, Mitt Romney is probably the safest candidate to be able to do that. He uh, looks good in a suit, he has nice hair, uh, he speaks well, he does well in debates, he can walk and chew gum at the same time, he looks presidential, that's always the big, the big key phrase you hear. And so people think that of all of the candidates out there, he's the one that is really the path of least resistance. He, out of the gate, has the best chance of beating Obama. Well, it's kind of hard to argue that. There are some intangibles there, speaking strictly in a political sense, that work to his advantage. So if you were thinking that 2012 is only about winning the election, and it's only beating Barack Obama, and it's only about putting someone with an R at the end of their name in the White House and nothing more, then yeah, I guess Mitt Romney would be your guy. I could see that. I could see that. But the problem is for a lot of us, myself included, those of us who are in the conservative movement, those of us in the Tea Parties, those of us who are in that conservative uprising that's happened in the last couple of years in America, just winning the election is not enough for us. There's more to it than that. When Barack Obama won the presidency, and the Tea Party kind of sprouted up, and the media characterized it as just a, a petulant, and angry response to Barack Obama winning the presidency. The media missed the point on that. This uprising was about so much more than just a Democrat being in office. It's so much more than just about Barack Obama being in office. The anger and the consternation that came from us was partially about Barack Obama, partially about liberal policy, partially about the Democrats having power, yes, but a lot of that anger was also about the Republican Party. A lot of that anger was also about a political system in which the Republican Party had been so focused on winning elections that they lost sight of what direction our country was headed in. They lost sight in the long-term goals that many of us have for our nation. So that's where a lot of this anger came from. And in that respect, we look at someone like Mitt Romney and we see, in a lot of ways, much of the same that we've seen from the Republican Party over the last 20 years. And so that's why so many of us are so interested in the field. If you look at it in terms of Romney versus the field, so many of us are interested in the field, the other candidates. And to prove that, just look at Mitt Romney's numbers over the last two or three months. Uh, 
pretty much any uh, polling you want to look at shows Mitt Romney at about 23-25% thereabouts, and he stayed pretty steadily at that number for the last three months. And I find that very interesting because this, this run to the presidency, this run to the nomination, all the debates, all that's happened, has been as tumultuous as any we have seen in American history, certainly during our lifetimes. There have been candidates coming into the race, candidates going out of the race, candidates that shoot up in popularity, and then a week later there are also runs. Then there's candidates that you think are going to run, but they don't run. It's been all over the board. But in the middle of all that, there Mitt Romney is set at 23, 24, 25% and not moved a muscle. Now, what strikes me as interesting about that is that you would think, for someone who is a front runner, acknowledged as a front runner, you would think that as all of these different changes go on elsewhere within the party, as all of these different ebbs and flows go on with the other candidates, as people drop out of this race, or as people lose popularity, you would think that a front runner would be able to pick up a percent here, two percent there, a little bit from this person, a little bit from that person. But yet for all the changes happened within this race over the last eight weeks, Mitt Romney has not picked up any significant support. And that shows you where that divide is. Because here's Mitt Romney, the guy who on paper, if you're looking at it strictly in terms of political strategy, he would be the guy yet virtually 75% of the Republican populace are not ready to commit to it. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you what, where the resistance comes from. And I alluded to it earlier when I told you what the Tea Party movement was really about. The anger with both political parties. The anger with going along to get along. The anger with compromise that gets us nowhere. The anger with losing focus about what's really important. We feel Mitt Romney is very much the same way. We feel he's a moderate. And a moderate to us is effectively a dirty word because we've dealt with moderates in the Republican Party for most of our adult lifetimes. And look where it's gotten us. With the exception of Ronald Reagan, every Republican candidate or president since that time has not moved our country closer to conservatism, has not done very much to deconstruct the federal government that has put us in this peril that we are in right now. And so really when you think about it, the Tea Party, the conservatives have made a lot of inroads over the last two years. We've influenced a lot of things. We have politicians, mainly Republicans, but some Democrats, essentially scared of us now. They're kowtowing to us, which is what this country needs. So it strikes me that if we in the Tea Party get behind a moderate at this point, Mitt Romney or otherwise, that really we would be giving back a lot of the ground that we have gained over the last two years. And by we, I mean conservatives, not Republicans conservatives. We've gained a lot of ground and we forced a lot of discussions to happen in Washington that had not happened in a long time. And if we get behind a moderate, I say we lose that. And here's why. You see, for most of our adult lifetimes, the Republican Party has functioned on the idea that they had the conservative voters in their back pocket no matter what. That all they had to do was convince you that the, the Democratic candidate was unbearable and you would come out and vote for that Republican candidate, moderate as they might have been, simply to vote against the other guy. And largely it worked. And hey, I'm pointing the finger blaming blame myself on that as much as anybody. Back in the 90s, I was one of those people that would go out there and vote for Bob Dole simply because he wasn't Bill Clinton. That I would go out there and, and you know, vote for a George W. Bush simply because he was not Al Gore. That was all you needed to do. All you had to do was get the conservatives to the polls, and you knew they would vote for the Republican. So really, the Republican Party did not have to do much of significance to keep our support. And that's what I think has changed in the last two years. That's what I think is a healthy change from what we've seen. And I don't want to give that up. The goal for us on the right, the goal for us as conservatives, the goal for us as Tea Partiers, is not just to win an election. Don't get me wrong, beating Barack Obama's key, it'll be a great improvement for this nation. But it's something much deeper than that. This is about re-establishing conservatism in America. This is about moving our nation and our culture, not just a political party, not just the White House, moving our culture more towards a conservative way of looking at things. Just having an R after your name, that's not enough. And with that in mind, a guy like Mitt Romney gives us a lot of doubts. You know, so many of us are 
are anti-Obamacare and anti-government run health care. But yet Romney, well, he had a health care program in his state. And he's the first to tell you, well, it's very different than Obamacare, and we did it this way, and here's where it's different. Whether it is or it isn't, there's a lot of debate on that, is not the point. The mere fact that you are open to the idea tells us you are not conservative enough. I don't care how well run Romney Care is or isn't. It could be the best health care program in the world. It doesn't matter because it's still government involvement in health care and that is off the table. That should never happen under any circumstances. Now some of you out there are, are insisting or thinking or insinuating that the rebelliousness against Romney or, or, or the lack of support for Romney has something to do with his religion. I don't really think that's the case. Uh, while it is true that there are some people out there who uh, are against Romney because he's a Mormon, and, and I don't have any problem with those people. I mean, those are your religious beliefs. I don't necessarily agree with them, but I, I have no problem with you making a decision based on your religious beliefs. I think more people should do that when it comes to politics. But I think the overall number of people who are against Romney simply because he's a Mormon, I think that's pretty low. I think the, the media is trying to trump that up to be bigger than it really is. You know, when I talk to people, conservatives around town that I work with and I hang out with, I really don't hear any of them that say, you know what, he's a Mormon, we can't let him in the White House. I don't hear that. I'm not doubting there's some people out there that believe that. But on the whole, when it comes to the conservative movement, I don't think it's a large number. But there is an M word that hurts Mitt Romney with conservatives. It's not Mormon, it's moderate. We are hell bent on not electing another moderate. Just like we're hell bent on not having a liberal, not having an Obama, we're not going to take a moderate either. We are not going to accept the lesser of the two evils just to get Barack Obama out of office and put someone with an R after their name in office who may not be much better. What's the point of that? Isn't that the very same treadmill that got America in this mess? We think it is. So it leaves one question, and this was a question that came up in the radio program that I referred to earlier. What if Romney ends up being the nominee? I mean, I've told you already that he's flat in support, he's not gaining anything, but there's no guarantee that it won't happen over the next few months. A few more people get out, maybe it comes to a three-person race, maybe Romney does gain some support. Or maybe Romney does end up with the nomination, and then we conservatives have a decision to make. Do we support him? Do we get behind him? It's a tough question, because the... the prospect of a second term for Barack Obama is almost unthinkable. It would do damage to our nation that it would be hard to, hard to even fathom. But at the same time, I think the only logical answer is no, we should not support Mitt Romney, even if he gets the nomination. I'm not going to say that 100%. There might be some things he can do to get my vote, but there's very few of them. I am open to not voting for him. That doesn't mean I'd vote for Barack Obama. But I might have to go looking for a third party candidate if there was one out there that I thought was significantly more conservative. Now on that radio program I talked about, a couple of people called in with some different opinions of what would happen if Romney got the nomination. More than one person said if Romney gets the nomination they're just going to stay home and not vote and that's going to be their protest. And I agree that a protest would be in order if Romney gets the nomination, but I don't think staying home is the right protest. Frankly, in my opinion, too many people sacrificed too much for our right to vote. Too many people died for that right for us to stay home. I think a better protest would be to find the best possible third party candidate and vote for that candidate. Even though Barack Obama might end up winning, which would be a disaster, I think it would send the message to the Republican Party that we are no longer in your pocket. That you can no longer count on our vote simply because you can get us to the polls. It would show them that we are paying attention we are active and we do think for ourselves and that to get our votes in the future they're going to have to do a little bit more. You know, any of you who have uh, known people who have been caught in the throes of addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, or maybe you have been yourself, you've heard people talk about that you can't really get clean and sober until you hit rock bottom. And any of you who have gone through that with loved ones or friends, you know that sometimes what you think would be rock bottom for them doesn't end up being rock bottom. And, and their personal rock bottom is so far beyond what you can imagine that, that it's unthinkable until they actually get there. And I wonder sometimes if we're not seeing the same thing with the Republican Party. I would have thought 
that November 2008 would have been rock bottom for the Republican Party. That would have been their come to Jesus moment. That would have been their, their point where they say, whoa, we've lost control of this thing. Because we screwed up so bad, a guy like Barack Obama got elected. Maybe need to, we need to reassess things. But if they nominate Mitt Romney, then I think it shows 2008 wasn't rock bottom at all. And as painful as it is to say it, we might have to be in a situation where Obama wins a second term. As much as I hate to say that, that might be what it takes to get the Republican Party to their real rock bottom. I hate to say this, but there is a possibility that the Republican Party must die so that it can live again. Now, I hope we don't get to this point. The easiest way around this is to deny Mitt Romney the nomination. Let's get Herman Cain in there. He's the guy, as far as I'm concerned. He's not the only good candidate, but I think he's the best one out there. So let, let's not even get to this point. Let's not even have that decision on the table of Romney's the nominee, what do you do? I think there will be a division within the Republican Party at that point, and it will be a division that's a long time in coming. But we can avoid it by electing a conservative nominee. And I'll tell you now, for all the fear that a conservative wouldn't win, Barack Obama is not a popular man right now. The rock star persona is not there anymore. The hope and change stuff done. The historical, the historical aspect of electing the first black president. We've been there. We've done that. We bought the T-shirt. He has to run his record. His record is abysmal. He will not have the enthusiasm he had before. We can win this election with almost anybody we put up against him. My God, a house plant could beat Barack Obama right now. Let's not go for the safe candidate. Let's go for the best candidate in the Republican Party. It's not only about winning the election. It's about getting America back on the right track. We know Barack Obama can't do that, but Mitt Romney cannot do it either. Let's get someone who can. Interesting discussion. A lot to look at for the next several months. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.